Baseball cards worth $1 million found in an abandoned warehouse. The Red Sox manager diagnosed with a serious disease. A sweeping policy is announced by the MLB. All this and more on this edition of MLB This Week. And hello and welcome to this edition of MLB This Week. It's the MLB This Week show. My name is Rich. And I'm Gary. And we're surrounded by all our fans here. <laughs> and it's time for another exciting show about the week of baseball. And we got a ton of stories for our listeners this week, Gary. Yes, Rich, and uh, lots of stuff going on. I mean, uh, no hitters and then complaints about uh, pine tar, maybe all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah. And I've been uh, sort of watching my Phillies all week. Uh, they've had a youth movement come up. Uh, some of the uh, acquisitions that they've made have come up and made a splash onto the scene, caused them to win a few games. So I've been sort of in a Phillies cocoon almost. I haven't been really paying attention to the week that was in baseball, so I'm going to learn something this week. <laughs> well, uh, you know, as always, Rich, there's always something going on in this game, and uh, I, I'm, I'm like you. I'm kind of going to learn also about some things because I've been in a Mets cocoon as they just swept the Colorado Rockies and maintain a five-game lead in the NL East, so... Keeping my fingers crossed here. Yeah, and uh, you come down and visit the Phillies for four long games. I'm, I'm very concerned because we're uh, we're facing the heart of your best pitching order rotation on this trip. Yeah, you're gonna get Degrom. Uh, don't know if you when you're gonna. I don't know if you're gonna get Harvey, but you'll get uh, Degrom definitely, and uh, probably Nice and Cologne and. I don't know about who the other pitch is going to be. Oh, Syndergaard. Yeah, you'll get Syndergaard. Uh, so should be interesting. Uh, I, you know, I don't like these four-game series. I always figure uh, I just think the Mets should take series. So if they can take split four or take three out of four, I'll be happy. But uh, I think uh, the way that the Phillies have been playing lately, though, it's a different Phillies team. And, like you said, it they've got a youth movement and they're very loose and uh, they're playing for jobs, so it should be interesting. Yes, it should, and I'm I'm sure a lot of the Met fans will be taking the I-95 uh, drive down to Citizens Bank Park for this uh, game, as we talked about before the show. Uh, you saw a lot of Mets fans sitting out there in Colorado, so uh, isn't it funny how how fans of certain teams sort of like don their caps and uh, make their stadium debuts when the team is doing well. Yes, it is funny. And uh, and that those cap sales and shirt sales increase when they're doing well uh, also. But, uh, you know, those who have watched us have seen us sitting here in the good times and bad times with our caps and shirts on. So, uh, but, you know, it happens and. It's the same thing with the attendance, Rich. When the Phillies were winning, they had how many sold-out games in a row? And then as soon as they started slipping a little bit, they lost that, and then their attendance went down. But I guess it's yeah. human nature. Yeah, and you don't see as many fans in the uh, the road games like you used to. But, yeah, that's the ebb and flow of baseball for sure. And uh, we'd like to let our listeners know that are listening to the podcast. You can tune in live to our show right on YouTube or our Google plus page and follow us on Twitter. It's at MLB this week. That's the best place to find us on the internet. You can communicate with us there. Even send us a, a direct message if you want, but uh, you can also tune into our live video show that we do on uh, this show, Gary. And uh, we want to invite all of our 
podcast listeners into the video show as well. Yeah, you can find that on YouTube, and uh, you can even check that out uh, if you listen to the audio and you like the audio show at uh, Podomatic.com, uh, MLB This Week dot podomatic dot com check out the uh, video sh as well on youtube you can just go over there and see what we look like <laughs> that's for sure or that we might scare away a few listeners you never know so <laughs> it could be <laughs> check it out we do the video portion just for you and as you said gary we had a no hitter this past week uh houston astros right hander mike fires no hit to L.A. Dodgers in his first career complete game. Uh, there was a little controversy to his uh, no hitter, though. Uh, it was after the game there and in the middle of the game, actually, there was uh, video evidence of a foreign substance uh, in the corner pocket of Fire's glove. Um, it looked pretty, uh, pretty amazing from the photo. Yeah, but uh, nobody challenged it during the game, and uh, I guarantee that glove is clean now. So uh, who knows what it was. Uh, you know, the game's got a long history of cheating, whether anybody wants to uh, uh, admit it or not. I just saw a thing, was looking at an article today about uh, famous uh, guys and hitters that, that corked their bats, and, and I didn't even remember some of the incidents, so. But this is nothing new, and uh, look, if he got away with it, he got away with it. And, and one reason in the past that uh, teams have not mentioned anything is because half of their pitching staff is doing it as well. So uh, unless it's real obvious, like uh, we had last year with Boston and uh, the Yankees with Pineda had it all over his face and whatever <laughs> else he had it. I mean, that was so obvious it was ridiculous, so. If you're going to be ridiculous about it, then you're going to get caught. If you're smart and get away with it, you know, and people seem to think that nobody cheats in any, there's cheating in every sport. It's just the, uh, you know, to what extent do you cheat? And, um, you know, I mean, even when they use the words for a shift they'll, or when a shortstop's playing more up the middle, they'll say he's cheating up the middle. You know, it's a different kind of idea, but um, it, it, this stuff goes on. And uh, as long as it's not so blatant and you don't get caught at it, I guess it's okay. I mean, it, it's, I shouldn't say that people, maybe we'll get some letters about that, but uh, <laughs> um, I, I don't know. It's just if you're good at it and get away with it, you can make the, the Hall of Fame like Gaylord Perry. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's uh, something that I guess, like you're right, all athletes are looking for an edge usually, unless you're uh, some superstar. But, uh, yeah, no hitter. Uh, Houston Astros with a nice lead and the AL. And, uh, yeah, that's a team I think we're going to see go further in the playoffs this year. Oh, they're going to be interesting to watch. Uh, like you said, Rich, um, very young and exciting, and uh, they, they're building something there, and they, they've added uh, a couple of pieces at the trading deadline. So they are going to be very interesting, and California is still in the mix, and, and uh, Texas is uh, back into that race. So uh, it, it's going to be a heck of a time to, to see what goes on. But I think, uh, I think Houston's going to hang on. I think they're going to either get the wild card or get into the win the division. Yep, we have a lot of people not ringing that doorbell trying to uh, make a name for themselves in the uh, Major League Baseball scene and uh, a lot of new stars coming out of that baseball team as well. And, Gary, you have our first story up here, kind of a – story we don't like to talk about on on the show here but uh nonetheless part of life well rich and we actually uh missed this last week uh we didn't really miss it i think we just had so many stories we couldn't get to it but um you know sometimes the uh game of baseball takes it back to seat, seat to life 
And uh, last week we found out the baseball world was really uh, uh, thrown for a loop when it was announced that Boston Red Sox manager John Farrell was diagnosed with stage one lymphoma. Uh, he began chemotherapy this past week and will take approximately nine weeks. So he will take a leave. He took a leave from the team. His uh, bench coach, Tori Lavulo, will manage the rest of the season for the Red Sox. Farrell was 53 years old, a young man, recently had surgery for a hernia, and the cancer was detected during that procedure. Uh, the mask was removed, and no additional surgery was needed or will be needed. So they, they removed whatever they found. But, uh, you know, um, th that's something, as you said, Rich, that you want to hear, and is just, too much cancer in this world now yes indeed we wish him well and uh, hope that everything turns out well for uh john farrell there the red Sox, and hope he gets back to baseball soon yes and uh we'll cert they'll certainly miss him in boston and we'll miss, miss him uh throughout the, the the world of baseball Yes, indeed. Well, thinking about the world of baseball, I'm going to try to a screen share on this um, this story. You have to tell me if uh, you can see this. Yes. What we're looking at in, in the video portion of the podcast, here's our next story. And this past week or so ago, uh, more than $1 million worth of sports cards were found in an abandoned warehouse in Detroit. Uh, millions of top cards of all descriptions were found uh, by a couple guys. That the story didn't say what they were doing in this abandoned warehouse, but <laughs> on one of the higher floors of this warehouse, there was just millions of cards laying around in boxes. Uh, it's obvious that people were up there and had been looking through some of these cards. They were everywhere all over the floors and literally cases of unopened sports cards from baseball, football, hockey, you name it. Uh, the cards were there. So uh, the next part of the story is these couple guys want to claim these cards for themselves, possibly selling it off and uh, making some money off of it. But first there's an investigation on who left the cards there and, how long they've been there it just seems like the warehouse has been abandoned for over 25 years it was the old fisher auto body plant there in detroit and uh, literally uh, about a 12-story building it's completely empty from our uh, nation's past automobile uh, production there in detroit a treasure trove of cards found Wow, that's that's incredible, Rich. I mean, uh, unbelievable to uh, to really to see uh, all of that those cards and uh, just incredible. Yeah, just never know uh, what you're going to see or find <laughs> in these well, old it's, warehouses. It's it's just uh, unbelievable that that and uh, I guess they're in pretty, it's hard to see by those pictures, but uh, I guess they're in pretty good condition. Yeah, a lot of them are still in the cases, wrapped up tight. They haven't even been opened. Uh, so it's an interesting story in itself. Who put all these cards here? And, you know, how long <laughs> have they been there? Obviously, they've been there for a long time uh, from the late 1980s and early 90s uh, a couple of guys that call themselves urban explorers their hobby is to venture into forgotten man-made structures in other words getting into these abandoned buildings which i don't think is a great idea but uh, here they happened upon a, a big treasure trove worth potentially millions and, you know, it's almost like it was a, a former card store or something, perhaps, that uh, stored the stuff there. But uh, I don't know how, who went through these stuff and spread it all out all over the place and and left it. I mean, if you're going to go in and go through it instead of spreading it, wouldn't you just kind of 
grab boxes and take them to your house or something and and keep yeah. it secret and you know i guess uh time weather and everything else has a has a play in all this you know as the windows get broken and whatnot in these old factories uh you know wind and rain mm -hmm. get in there and things like that but yeah it's a very uh odd find but every now and again there's a story that comes up either cards that are found from the uh, early 1900s or late 1800s here's here's a more recent one but the sheer amount of these cards is amazing mm, that's that's the unbelievable part so many cards there and wow that's some collection <laughs> yes it is well you have our next story up here on the show and MLB This Week program, the independent talk show that we bring to you uh, every week here. And, Gary, uh, it didn't take that long. Well, yeah, Rich. Um, when uh, Dave Dombrowski was let go as president of, and general manager of the Detroit Tigers earlier this month, it was, uh, you know, everybody kind of figured that he would be getting another job. And uh, uh, But I don't think anybody uh, saw this coming, that it would be this soon and in this city and the city of course is the boston as the boston red sox announced that dombrowski would take over the franchise as president of baseball operations effective immediately and will report to principal owner john henry and chairman tom werner ben sherrington boston's gm since october 2011 has stepped down but according to the red sox will assist Dombrowski as he transitions into the role. Former Atlanta Braves GM Frank Wren is the early favorite to replace Charrington. So Charrington's out. I guess he didn't get the job done. And uh, Dave Dombrowski is in and, and uh, possibly uh, Frank Wren. So um, didn't Dave didn't collect too many unemployment checks, if you know what I mean, Rich. Yeah, and they jumped right on him, uh, similar to the way the uh, Cubbies jumped on Joe Madden uh, not too long ago. He was on the market a short time, and the Cubbies just jumped on him, and, and look at the Cubbies now. That's right. They, they're, uh, they're playing terrific. I think they just swept the Atlanta Braves. Thank you, Chicago. <laughs> and... Uh, um, yeah, they're just playing terrific ball. 70, 71 wins uh, they have now, and they uh looks like they're going to head to the playoffs, or at least the wild card game. Yeah, make things interesting there. And what a turnaround. It, it seemed like it might be a couple years for the Cubs they were talking about a short time ago, but uh, since they got Joe Madden, it just seems like a, a whole new uh, feeling there in cubby land of course they have some good players they they accumulated as well but uh, yeah just an amazing turnaround there in chicago um our next story up here is the mlb czar and i will call him a czar i think he's really really taken the mlb by the horns here uh announced that there would be a long-awaited policy on domestic violence an agreement that gives the commissioner authority to sp suspend players for abusive acts, even if they are not convicted of a crime. A uh, story appeared in USA Today, amongst other newspapers, in the past week. And nearly one year after then Commissioner Bud Selig vowed to create a comprehensive policy in the wake of the NFL's fumbling of the Ray Rice episode, which incidentally occurred in Atlantic City, New Jersey, which is uh, kind of near me. Um, baseball made it a mandate to come up with a comprehensive policy to deal with issues like this. And uh, I know Atlantic City in general was roundly criticized. They actually put Ray Rice on a uh, program of pretrial intervention where he eventually uh, will work his way out of the crime that was committed there. Uh, and in case you didn't follow it, you're not a football fan. He actually assaulted his uh, wife in an elevator, and it was all captured on videotape. Quite a 
an alarming type of uh, video there from the mid-morning hours of uh, after midnight. But, uh, yeah, and Atlantic City's idea to deal with it was, you know, you made a mistake, your wife's still standing by you, just go away, you know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the Major League Baseball uh, announced that they will have uh, certain – uh, treatment plans available and also a three panel uh, board that a player that is accused of anything like this will have to face. Uh, so it, it'll, it'll come at the cr commissioner's discretion, which is basically what happened in the NFL version of the story. Um, Ray Rice, I believe was suspended by the NFL for a while, but eventually uh, got back into football. So, you know, these things have to be dealt with. And uh, here uh, our baseball czar is making no uh, no bones about it. He's uh, in this to win it. Well, that's for sure. And I think in this politically correct climate, he's got to do something. Uh, jumping on a bandwagon, uh, you know, to get ahead of the other sports, I guess. is. I, and I don't really call any or too many incidents uh, offhand i don't can't even think of any with base involving baseball players i'm sure there there has been and i'm not just i'm not remembering them but uh i don't know about you rich you remember any incidents involving baseball players at all with domestic violence well within the phillies uh organization uh back around the time where they won the world series uh, the only one i remember is brett myers um, in Boston, when the Phillies were up there, there was a late night again, coming home from a bar, going back to the hotel, Brett Myers and his wife, there was a disagreement, uh, that was loud. And, uh, he was accused of, uh, very similar things as Ray Rice, although there was no video involved in it, but yeah, that was, Baseball stories seem to get sort of swept under the rug quite a bit, unless you're within the fan base of the particular team. Mm -hmm. A lot of that stuff doesn't make it to the national news. It probably would today, as you said, in this climate that we're in now. Um, there's a big spotlight on that kind of stuff. But, you know, I guess uh, baseball itself wanted to just make sure that they have the uh, – things in place to deal with it if and when it does happen yeah and i think they they learn uh you know because uh, uh football gave them uh i forget what it was initially uh, a, a four game suspension or something and then people started to complain so they increased it um and then uh other people got caught for more heinous actions or and got the same amount of time so uh I, I it's a little the whole thing was foggy and i think uh manfred just said you know let's get ahead of this let's jump on it before any incidents occur we're putting uh we're putting to the uh catbird seat there or whatever and uh let's let's get ahead of it so we're not gonna get criticized by anybody and i think i think that's what he's trying to do for the game with a lot of different issues and yeah, you can tell he's sort of a lawyer type of uh, active lawyer type of background because it, he's just really jumped into the forefront. You never really heard too much from uh, Commissioner Bud Selig. Uh, he would appear at all-star games and things like that, and you'd hear from him occasionally, but nowhere near the attention-grabbing headlines that this uh, Rob Manford has already commanded from baseball fans well i think manfred's a little younger is a little more active uh on things and and just wants to get the game ahead of the curve on everything that's that's the way i see it um trying to make a mark maybe but uh trying to, to get maybe he just sat there and realizes that silly let it let a lot of things go by and now uh He's going to try to make up for it and try to catch catch the game up to the 21st century. Yeah, that could be it. You know, it's a, a good thing when 
on things like this. A lot coming out in the news, though, about all these changes. Baseball wants to change this. They want to speed up the game. They want to do this. They want to do that. The last time I checked, there's still millions of fans going to baseball. I just yeah. I don't think you have to fix something that isn't broken. In the process, you can also break something that's not broken. Yeah, I. But I think he's looking at a lot of procedural things, and I think he's he's. Uh, we discussed this before. I think he's throwing things out there and seeing what sticks. Um. He, he's kind of rushing into things, but yet he's not rushing into th things. You know, they're trying to clock in some of the minor, the lower minor leagues and things like that. And um, we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, it 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 hasn't hurt the game so far. Any of his maneuvers, um, and this really has nothing to do with the game itself. This is just uh, uh protecting the organization of, of MLB baseball uh, in case of an incident comes up so they're ready to roll. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think it's all about uh, covering your butt and uh, being ready if something occurs. Well, you're listening to MLB This Week, the independent podcast brought to you each week here. You can tune in on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, MLBThisWeek.com. Our YouTube and Google Plus pages are big places to catch the show. You can also circle us as a friend on Google Plus. Uh, visit our Patreon page. You can make a donation. We're listener-sponsored. You can go to patreon.com, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash MLB this week. Make a small donation. We would appreciate it. We'd like to do some additional things with the show, and we, we can do that with your support. We're still waiting, so uh, jump on board and be the first one in on this. Yeah, we need more hats. <laughs> hats and maybe, you know, some other things that the – the show would like to get into but uh <laughs> gary also leave us a, a comment if you like us if you listen to our show stop by the itunes feed that we put up there and tell us what you like about the show rate and review i think they call that a lot of uh, podcasts call out to their listener base for reviews and comments so we're going to jump on board and do the same thing i think yeah sounds good rich well, you have our next story up this week, Gary, uh, Mr. Ned Yost. Well, Ned Yost is an uh, interesting guy. And uh, last week, uh, I believe it was last week's Sunday night game, there was a, uh, a picture that came up on the screen. And, and uh, if you're watching our video show, you can see it then. An interesting uh, black thing on his wrist. And it caught the uh, attention of some people. And a uh, few people asked the Royals beat writer, Andy McCullough of the Kansas City Star, to find out about Yost's new watch. And it turns out it's an Apple watch. And the Kansas City Star, uh, as I said, McCullough asked Yost about the watch and got an interesting response. Apparently, MLB uh, called Yost after this and told him he's not allowed to wear the watch during games. There's a rule in place that doesn't allow cell phones in the dugout, and MLB doesn't realize, uh, uh, didn't realize the watch isn't a phone. When you're away from your phone, all it is is a watch, Yost said. It's just a clock. And he's entirely right. It, it, it uh, connects to your phone. When it isn't paired with the phone, its uses are really limited. There are some apps you can use, but it's not like using a cell phone in the dugout. Uh, Yoast added he only really uses the watch to catalog his exercise goals and check the weather. Now, Rich, the best part about all of this uh -huh. is that MLB gave Yoast the watch. <laughs> but you can't wear it during the game for being the manager of the american league all-star team last month so they gave it to him and then they realized that, hey this, this this you know he can't wear this thing because uh he could be checking something and there's a rule against um uh having uh 
cell phones in the dugout and I don't know. Maybe Manfred's got to look into that. That could be another archaic rule that uh, uh, I could see the cell phones, but um, I, I guess then a, a, a coach or a manager can't use it, uh, a tablet or uh, they have to have the com they can use the computer printouts. Yeah, I guess, but they can't use the tablet itself in the dugout. I, I don't know. I think, you know, as we go on, that'll probably change because um, you can get so much information on that quickly. But, uh, uh, you know, I, there are some silly rules when you do think about it because, um, there, you know, we go back to the cheating thing again, and, and one of it probably that he's going to get an edge by checking something on his cell phone or on the tablet and but what's to stop him from going down into the tunnel and having uh, a, a laptop down there and checking out the same information yeah and football sort of has embraced tablet use i believe this year uh head coaches are going to be able to view tablets on the field if i'm not mistaken i did think i heard something about that uh coming up for this season so yeah, it's, it's interesting how professional sports, uh, especially in the MLB with the way they have their apps so uh, accessible to the fans, uh, MLB offers the best in streaming online for its games to the fans. A number of years now, they've perfected that, and they also have um, subscriptions for the uh, audio package, which they pioneered as well, so... Yeah, and the dugouts, it seems like it's still uh, not quite up to the times. Uh, maybe that'll be for next year for Rob Manfred to deal with. And yeah, especially part of that story where they gave him the watch, but, oh, you can't wear it. <laughs> well, you know, it's not the first time we've heard of companies giving their employees something and then realizing uh, perhaps it was not the best thing to have given them, so... That's for sure. Well, part of our program here has been for the past few episodes anyway, has been this date in baseball. And here's another edition of that. Um, back in 1989, this week in baseball, uh, Rick Dempsey had a leadoff home run in the 22nd inning, wow. gave the L.A. Dodgers a one to nothing victory against the Montreal Expos and the second longest shutout in Major League history back in 1989, that was. And maybe some of our listeners remember this, Gary, although I suspect some of them are younger. Uh, Sammy Sosa, back in 1998, of the Chicago Cubs, hit his 50th and 51st homers against the Houston Astros. Mark McGuire hit his 53rd at Pittsburgh, marking just the second time two National League hitters have 50 home runs in the same season. Uh, before that, back in 1947, Ralph Kiner of the Pittsburgh Pirates and the New York Giants, Johnny Mize, tied for the league lead with 51 each. And I guarantee you they didn't have steroids back then. <laughs> no, no, they didn't. <laughs> and, of course, Ralph Kiner was the announcer for the Mets and played about uh, – uh, I think 12 seasons in Major League Baseball, Hall of Famer, but of his uh, 12 seasons, or it, he led the National League in homers like uh, nine or ten times. So he, he, prolific home run hitter with a short career, had a bad back, uh, but still got him into the Hall of Fame. Uh, great hitter and, and a great announcer, the, the late Ralph kind of for so many years, as was Johnny Mize, is also a terrific uh hitter for the New York Giants and a number of other teams. Yeah, he was. And just to jump back back to 1998 again, Gary, uh, that was just four years removed from the great baseball strike of 1994, which a lot of fans really got sour on baseball. A lot of them left and never came back to the game, even still. Um, four years later, this back and forth by uh, Sammy Sosa, and Mark McGuire really attracted a lot more fans, of course, at the expense of steroids. Uh, apparently, these players were 
juiced up on. But I don't even think baseball cared because their their mission was to draw back the fan base, and they did it with that. Yeah, and, uh, you know, McGuire was a big boy anyway. I, I know they keep saying that, that he, you know, he took the steroids, and, I, you know, he was a big guy to begin with, though, and uh, did it make him stronger? Maybe. Uh, you know, just, I don't want to get into the just whole like, <laughs> Just like Bonds, he, you know, he was never as big as he was after no. the steroids. But, you know, Bonds was a, a, a terrific ball player before he started taking him. He just did it to extend his career. Um, McGuire, in a certain way, he was injured a lot, and I'm sure it helped him get over injuries. But, you know, he hit, I think, 30 plus home is his first rookie year or something or his second season. Uh, so it, it's not like he, you know, maybe more of a case can be made for Sammy Sosa because he was kind of an average ball player and, and uh, um, came out of nowhere with these home runs. But uh, McGuire was a home run hitter and was expected to be a home run hitter. So, I don't know how much, and I don't think we'll ever know how much the steroids did to help anybody, and we'll never know what pitches were doing it at the time, too. It's all speculation at this point, and um, I, I just don't think we'll ever know. No, not for sure, uh, As especially as time is passing by since that uh, era, but we have the baseball writers. They remember, and they're in control of the uh, the voting into the Hall of Fame. So they're not going to let us forget. But we're moving on with the show here. We have uh, our next uh, portion of the program. Gary is a story that you have, and heroism on the diamond is the theme. Well, Rich, you know, heroes come in all shapes and sizes, but uh, they all have one thing in common, valor in a face of danger in a clean uniform. Well, it was a young ball boy with the Oakland Athletics from Saturday's Rays Athletics game that was no exception. With a ground ball bearing down on the Oakland bullpen and little time to react, this young bat ball boy did the only thing he could do. He dove for the ball and caught it in a very nice catch, I might add. Uh, love to show it, but uh, copyright infringements may stop us from showing it. So, uh, But it was a terrific play, and for his bravery in the face of grave danger, he was rewarded with fist pumps from the entire ace pitching staff and a dirty uniform, so... Our hats go off to this uh, Oakland A's ball boy for making a terrific play and taking his job quite seriously. Very cool. And uh, a lot of people get hit with those line drives and injured. And that leads us into our last story of the show here. Uh, on Friday night in Detroit, after a female fan was hit by a foul ball during the eighth inning, of a game between the Detroit Tigers and the Texas Rangers, Tiger starter Justin Verlander called on Major League Baseball to extend the protective netting behind home plate, saying it's something that needs to be addressed immediately, in quotes. I was quite adamant about it. After the game, he said, it seems like something happens once a game where a ball just misses a fan and inevitably it's small kids or women, you know is what Verlander said after the Tigers 2 to nothing loss. And he also added that, quote, it's just something that needs to be looked at, and hopefully it doesn't get to the point where something really serious happens before there's an adjustment made. So yeah, I think we've seen some of those uh, serious happenings already this year, and probably they occurred in previous years, Gary, but the coverage just wasn't there. Well, the only thing I'll, I and this is a tough issue because uh, I I think it's a good idea, but I've also sat behind some of those screening, and it's annoying. 
Yeah. It's hard to follow the game. It's hard to, it's just annoying. And uh, interesting that he said it seems to happen to women and small children. And, you know, maybe because they're not paying attention. Yeah. And, I'm, you know, I mean, you, you watch ball games and you see these women behind the home plate and they're chatting away and, and sure the netting is there, but nobody's paying attention. And I'm sure it's that way throughout ballpark or all the rest of the areas. And, you know, they, they tell you, you, if you're in those lower level seats, especially you got to pay attention. And then you see uh, the next part of that is how high are the nets going to be? Are they going to be 12 foot high? Are they going to be 20 foot high? And is it going to be uh, a problem? Like you said, Gary, because basically the people like those lower seats because they can see the game better. They're, they're right down on the field practically. And as you said, you know, fan attention during a game is being pulled in so many directions. We have mascots, we have video boards that are getting better every year. There's always something happening in a, in a stadium environment to distract you. You got a pitch speed clock. You've got this, you've got that. So you're, your attention is turned away from the field a lot. And I, I find myself doing that sometimes at a game, not that I sit down real low, but I, I find myself, you know, looking at the scoreboard or they're going to put stats up or things like that. And then you miss a play. So yeah, it's, uh, it's very concerning that, uh, that this is happening, but we'll have to see what they do about it. Yeah, and I I know they've made advancements in these netting to try to get it, but um, I I haven't sat behind it on a major league level, so maybe that has something to do with it. I did sit in a minor league game, and and perhaps they're not have they don't have the state of the art netting, if you will. Uh, but I found it uh, very distracting, and uh, it, not to. to <laughs> Uh, you know, it just, it bothered me as far as, uh, when a ball was hit, it just seemed to be confusing, um, just hard to follow. And then, and then, and I, I, if you, if I looked to my right, I could see without the net. So if it was something in right field, it looks, it was so much clearer because it was no, it wasn't looking at through a net. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what kind of net they can get that's virtually invisible. I don't know if there's anything like that. Um, should, you know, perhaps there should be something done. I, I just think that, you know, people got to be, uh, uh, I, I know that there's a lot of distractions, as you said, at the ballpark itself. But, you know, a lot of times it's the cell phones and, and uh, now people bring in their iPads and everything else to the games. And, and that's where, uh, you know, that's where I think the distractions come in and, and where the possibility of injury can uh, occur. Yeah. And if you're buying tickets, know that if you're in the first 10 rows from first to third, you better keep your eye on the ball at all times. Uh, you know, sometimes these hot shots are right on you before you can move these foul balls and things. And that's why I don't like minor league games all that much. I would never sit down low because everything's so close in that you've got to just be on your guard at all times. Uh, and that ball comes whistling in there. There's no way some of these fans are going to be able to catch the ball, let alone get out of the way of it. So, well, you know, just always always bring my glove <laughs> <laughs> and i know uh, depending upon where you sit and if you're sitting from uh home to uh, right field then you got to worry about the right-handed batters and uh if you're the other way you got to worry about the lefties because they always seem to go it's the opposite direction the opposite header from where you're sitting uh where you're gonna get the trouble so um, haven't really never had a problem. So keep your heads up. If you're, uh, at a game in the first 10 to 15 rows from first to third, 
And even a little bit further down the line, keep your head in the game. If you're listening to the show, that's our best tip for you here. And uh, Rich, one more thing. I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, but uh, you were saying about the minor leagues, everything's close. But you know what happens a lot of times when they do foul one back high, it goes over the crowds and, and out of the, the stadium. So you got to worry more about your car if you're yeah. close to the stadium. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, that that's one good thing about being so close to the action because it does it'll go right over everything <laughs> everything yeah yeah and those high pops are another thing you know you you don't want to you don't want to be a part of that if you don't have a glove I've had several uh, foul balls fly past me and you know you, you just don't want a part of it sometimes those foul balls so <laughs> keep your head up. Keep your eye on the game, and uh, we want to encourage our listeners, send us an email. If you're uh, liking the show, talk at MLB This Week, or you can go to our website, mlbthisweek.com. We have a contact page on it. We'd love to hear some of your stories about the game of baseball as well. Gary, it's been another great show. can hardly uh, wait for the next one. Yep. Seven days, Rich, and, and I'm sure it'll be a jam-packed seven days with the way this baseball season's going. Yes, it will be, and we'll be back on it before you know it. So thanks for tuning in to this edition of MLB This Week, the independent podcast. We'll talk to you next broadcast.